Hello, everyone. My guest today is Steven Klautsnitzer. He's the CEO of Forever Labs, a Y Combinator company. Prior to Forever Labs, he spent 15 years mentoring and developing top talent at Fortune 500 companies, including American Express and others. He's ext- he has extensive experience in strategic growth, commercialization, and team leadership. Steven, are you ready to take us to the top? I'm ready, Nathan. All right, Forever Labs, what does this thing do? Tell me it's, tell me it's the water of life or whatever they call that thing in the mystical books. Sure. So it, uh, in short, Forever Labs will store your stem cells now so that you can live healthier longer. So I suppose it is a bit like what you suggested. Um, so what a lot of people don't realize is that as you age, you have less stem cells and the ones that remain become damaged and less effective. Uh, and there are over 500 clinical trials that are using the cells we store to treat age-related diseases. But when you get those diseases, you tend to be quite a bit older. Uh, And the stem cells that you still have are no longer uh, as effective as they would have been if you had stored them when you were younger. So our company is for proactive people that are uh, storing their young biology now so that they can access it later in life. So Stephen, you're pitching the fountain of youth. Why aren't you a trillionaire? Why isn't Kim Kardashian Snapchatting about the forever youth? I mean, seriously, how, how do you not become filthy rich from this? I mean, that's, that's obviously the plan, Nathan, but, uh, you know, we, we just started, um, we've been doing this, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we've been cl- customer facing for about a year and a half now. Uh, we just got done with the, um, summer class Y Combinator. Um, lots of great things are happening. We're in nine States now, you know, uh, what does that mean? So You're in, you have sales in nine States or what? Yeah, that's a really good question. I always, I make the assumption that people will know what that means. So, uh, and they don't. So what that means is that we have credentialed physicians in nine States, so we don't open offices. What I do is I go out and I find the best doctors in every market. And uh, these tend to be, uh, for us, orthopedic surgeons and plastic surgeons. Um, and we bring them on board and they perform the Forever Labs procedure for us. Um, and I'd be happy to describe that as well. But what, what, I, what I mean by best doctors is these physicians hail from Harvard, Stanford, Princeton, Yale, Duke, Michigan. They're really, really phenomenal uh, physicians. So we're trying to build... Um, a longevity company. And at the same time, um, we're building this really in and of itself, high value uh, physician network across the country. Do you have to have these physicians in order to sell the product or you just know you'll sell more with them? Uh, No, I have to have them. So in order for us to have, so what happens, let's say you were to sign up, Nathan, you go to foreverlabs.com, you know, click, get started, go through the process, sign up, uh, pay us. uh, And then what happens? What do I pay for that, by the way? Sure. It's $2,500 for the procedure. And then it's $250 a year to store your stem cells. Oh, this is interesting. Literally on the third step of your onboarding, I picked California and I literally have to pick a physician. You have their name and their address right there. Yes. Yep. So you pick a doctor. And by by the way, you you have no bad choices in Northern California or with any of our doctors, but um, I know those two gentlemen quite well and they're fantastic. But Dr. Babak Samimi? Yeah. So yeah, in LA. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Samimi's great. He has a procedure uh, today. I bet um, he kills us. I feel like everyone I see at brunching in Beverly Hills, they'd be all over this thing. Yeah. I mean, it's a great market for us, no yeah. doubt. Um, so uh, LA is phenomenal. Uh, San Francisco is really, we, we started in Michigan, but then what happened is we had people flying out from San Francisco to Michigan to have the procedure done. Um, and we realized very quickly that we needed to expand And our second market was San Francisco. So I'm on step two. Now I've picked my doctor. Annual storage plan is 2,500 bucks initial cost and 250, which is an annual storage fee. So kind of like a SaaS model there almost. And then a lifetime storage plan, I guess it's one time seven grand. Yeah. And that's like, a, I think in, if I master it, an 18 year break, even on yeah. that. So, you know, if you plan on living longer than 18 years, um, it makes sense you know, to do that if you have the resources. Um, so you would sign up on the site, Nathan, and then you would uh, be reached out to by one of our physicians. If you're in LA, like you mentioned, it might be if you sign up with Dr. Samimi, it would be Dr. Samimi, or uh, perhaps there we also have Dr. Um, uh, Banfi. Uh, one of those doctors would reach out to you, schedule a time that's convenient for you and for them for you to come in and have this procedure. It's a 15 minute outpatient procedure. When you go in there, the doctor will apply a little bit of lidocaine to your what's called your posterior iliac crest, which is a fancy way of saying your hip. I was going to say, what the hell is that? Okay. So it's right on my hip. Yes. Um, and I always like to point that out because a lot of people make the assumption that it's your spine or something. It's really, yeah, not. I'm like, they're cutting into my eyeball to pull out. Well, like. <laughs> it's so simple. It's really, uh, a lot of physicians actually refer to it as an advanced blood draw. So the doctor will take out 60 cc's of your bone marrow. And this is when people go like that. You just made the face where people, it, it raises people's hackles on it. That sounds right? painful. Uh, it does because most people uh, associate bone marrow with a bone marrow biopsy, 
which is painful. Um, and with a biopsy, you have to go in, you have to scrape a little bit of the bone. It's ugly stuff, right? This is a bone marrow aspiration. It's so fast. And um, I go to as many of these procedures as I can, Nathan, and I always ask the same question afterwards. I say, on a scale of one to 10, you know, what would you rate this if, if one is no pain and 10 is painful? And we are averaging a two. Is there a, a scar? I mean, is, do they cut? Is there a scar? No, no, no. It's like, um, it's really like a, an advanced blood draw. So uh, there's no scar. Um, the procedure itself probably takes five minutes. Uh, but from the time you lay down on, on your side to the time that you leave, it's about 15 so minutes. So this is like like when I had mono when I was young. I went to the doctor. They drew some blood from my arm right here to see if my white blood cell count was whatever, whatever. It's basically the same thing. Well, it's a little more than that because, I mean, I don't want to undersell it because they do have to go into your bone to access your bone marrow. Um, is there a drill? Like, like they drill in? There's not. No, it's just like um, uh, it's a, uh, a, trocar, <laughs> uh, a hollow trocar that goes into your bone and then um, – they take out 60 cc's of your bone marrow and we put it in a scent. Well, then it gets shipped to our processing facility in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. Uh, we, we process the cells there, which is to say that we remove the red blood cells, uh, bring it down to temperature, freeze it, uh, uh, use dry ice to ship it to our biorepository, which is in Franklin, Massachusetts, and we store them in liquid nitrogen. So what you have- for You the just made your yourself life, sound very cool, by the way. You, you're uh, like the health version of Elon Musk. Oh, well, that, hey, I'll, I'll welcome that compliment. Uh, I'm a fan. So we, what we do, though, is we store your bone marrow niche. And your bone marrow is extremely important. Uh, in your bone marrow, you've got hematopoietic stem cells, which build your blood. Uh, you've got mesenchymal stem cells, which build your bone, your vasculature, your connective tissue. So your soft muscle. So, Nathan, you're a young man. How old are you? 28. So you're 28 years old. So you would have access to your 28-year-old bone, blood, immune system, connective tissue, uh, almost in, in perpetuity, really. We store them in nine different, um, we call them uh, aliquots. Uh, you'll have access to your own 28-year-old cells at nine different points in the future. You can grow these stem cells to great numbers. So really from just one of those aliquots, uh, I, I should say our, my co-founder, Dr. Katakowski, has grown more of his own stem cells outside of his body than he has in his body right now. With so how fast tech is advancing, is there a day where I can produce baby Nathans without having to get married using these stem cells somehow? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure that is, I'm, honestly, I'm, I'm sure that it's coming, in fact. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm being quite, a little facetious here because like what you're actually selling is the person like buys this because they want to be able to go tell their friends they're storing their stem cells in some polar mountain somewhere and make them sound really cool. Like that's- Well, that might be some of it. I mean, like there's- That's why I would, that's what would sell me, by the way. Yeah, so Nathan, there's there is definitely some early adopters that I think like just the signaling that you've done this is like really cool, right? Yeah. But the reality is the- the reality of what you've done is way cooler than that. So, so how does it help me actually in the future? Yes. So I mentioned briefly, there's over 500 clinical trials using these cells. These trials are, are not for some fringe diseases. We're talking about cardiovascular disease, stroke, Alzheimer's. So, um, and some of these are in phase three, cardiovascular disease and stroke are in phase three. That's the number one and the number three killer of our species respectively. So, uh, uh, what they're finding is you can, for example, at Johns Hopkins, they took uh, these bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stem cells, that same ones we store for you, uh, and they grew them and introduced them into the damaged area of a person's heart after they had a heart attack. And they were able to grow healthy tissue, replace damaged scarred tissue with healthy tissue. Miraculous But it was stuff. healthy tissue, tissue taken, let's say it's an 80-year-old man. They had to take that yeah. from somewhere healthy on the 80-year-old man to it's put it. But here, check it out. Here's, here's what sucks. There's a number of people that wanted to participate in that, in that trial but couldn't because when they isolated their cells and they looked at them, there weren't enough of them there. And the ones that were there wouldn't grow because that 80-year-old man was too old. Had he stored his 28-year-old stem cells, that's not a problem. So part of what we're doing here, Nathan, is, is very pragmatic, very practical. You'll have the best possible treatments in the future using these cells. Now, the moonshot and what we're most excited about and frankly why we started the company – is because what we want to do, and we're already doing it in animals at Forever Labs, we're taking cells from young mice and we're putting them in genetically matched older mice because I should really start at the beginning here. We started the company because I was on the phone and you, you'll find this amusing. What year, by the way? This is two years ago. I'm on the phone so with- So 2015. My, yeah, so I'm on the phone with um, you know my very good friend um, and business partner previous to this, Dr. Mark Katakowski. And Mark spent his entire career working with these cells. He knows them better than just about anyone in the world. They're old friends to him. Um, so we're on the phone. We're actually working on a cryptocurrency company at the time um, called Coin, CoinAmp uh, that was in the Bitcoin space. 
And this is before it was cool to do this, by the way. Uh, but we were working on that. And Mark started telling me a story about how he had applied to the NIH and the NIA for a grant to take cells from young mice, put them in genetically matched older mice, because he was sure that the mice would live longer based on his work. Did, Did they? Uh, well, check it out. He got denied that grant, both those grants, but he had found out uh, on that phone call, he was telling me that two other groups had since done that same work and had shown that the mice lived about 16 to 20% longer with just one reintroduction. That's Does there have to be a match rate, like when someone gets a kidney transplant, or can any young mice go into any older mice relative yeah, of lineage? That's a really good question. So these are syngenic mice. So they might as syngenic. So they might as well be like genetically matched, right? Because they so, were genetically produced. Yes, exactly. So um, so Mark's telling me this, and he's like, I'm not mad that I didn't get the grant or that someone else perhaps is getting credit for uh, you know a hypothesis I had before they did. Uh, I'm mad because I'm turning 40 years old and I can't find anyone that will store my stem cells. And I'm like, what am, what are we doing? Like, why are we working in this space? Like, this is your expertise. My expertise is in business development uh, and leading teams. Why don't we marry those two expertise together and create this company? Yep. And so we did. And so that's how we came with Forever Labs. So now our goal as a company, and like I was saying before, our moonshot. Wait, before yeah. you tell me the moonshot, that's a good cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, All right. <laughs> what, what do you, I mean, what do you, are people buying this thing? Are you pre-revenue on the current offering oh, okay. or what? Yeah. Yeah. So we're in like, we're in nine States. We have over 200 or no, we're just about at our 200th client. Right okay. Now. That's good. So almost 200 people have gone through this and they're paying, they've bought, yeah. they've paid you something. These aren't like free giveaways. No, 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 no. They paid us. And okay. um, the cool thing, uh, Nathan, you know, as a fellow entrepreneur that you'll appreciate is that they're now referring their friends and family, which is, you know, the ultimate. So that's, um, that's happening. So, it, so it just to be clear there before we go to the moonshot. So, I mean, if you've got those 200 folks, right, that have paid at least two grand each, if they're on your first plan, I mean, that's 400 grand in revenue there. Plus yeah. you have a recurring stream that's slowly growing under that. That's at, at about 50 grand if they didn't yeah, choose a lifetime. Like 45,000 in recurring revenue. You have to remember some of those people signed up for the lifetime plan, yep. right? So yeah. Which is good for your yeah. cash flow, by the way. Yes. It's nice as a young company to have those people coming in too. Okay. You know, give you, me the moonshot. The moonshot. And what we're seriously most excited about is the ability for, so I'm 40 years old now. My are you really? Cells, yeah, I am. Uh, and my stem cells are 38. So I want, I'm going to take my 38 year old cells when I'm, I think about 45 years old, I'm going to grow them and I'm going to start reintroducing them intravenously and not to treat any specific disease or, um, just to reconstitute my stem cell niche. How does that actually happen though? Do you take them and like crush them into a powder, like a protein shake and put it in your morning juice and drink it? Like, how do you do that? No, we thaw them and we grow them in a culture medium. Um, and you know, my team's been doing this for 17 years, so it's really old. How does it get reintroduced though to your body? Just, uh, intravenously. You just, what like, is that? You, an IV. like right. You know, oh. when you, get, uh, you have an IV. It's just very, like, just like you could get pumped with fluids after a night out. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> You've had many of those nights, haven't you, Stephen? I, I'm about to have one tonight. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, we, um, <laughs> it would be the ultimate fluid, though, right? So this is like 28 year old Nathan is is the ultimate um, reintroduction when you're 30, 35 years old, 40 years old. So, so can uh, this make people? Li li I mean, live to be a million years old. I mean, where does this break? Yeah. So it's funny. Well, it's we're like I mentioned, we're nine markets now. And if we're in Michigan or North Carolina, um, it's a much more pragmatic market. People signing up there are signing up in order to treat perhaps a family disease. Cardi they maybe have a family history of cardiovascular disease or osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, what have you. People in San Francisco and LA, though, they're looking at longevity, right? And it's funny, we throw this party in San Francisco. It's actually a pretty amazing party. Uh, I'll send you an invite. It's uh, called the Longevity Soiree. And it's a bunch of longevity founders and influencers, lots of VC. Um, and you would be, you would be. Uh, Are these all old people that wish they were cute again or what? No, it's a lot of cute people that don't want to get old. Okay. Also, okay. I'm in. <laughs> no, you'd be, you'd fit right in. All right, good. But, um, so anyways, the talk there though is different than it is in those other markets. The talk there is about things like escape velocity, right? Like how do we get to a point where we're aging, um, uh, like the technology is advancing faster than we're aging, right? So we're able to replace the parts in our body faster than uh, the damage is accruing. So that yeah, it's, we it's, can, a, it's a delta, not a finite. It's the yeah. delta of two changing things. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the, I mean, like the simple analogy, right, is a, an automobile. Like we're headquartered in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We're maybe uh, 20 miles away from Henry Ford Museum. I can go there anytime I want and drive around in a Model T car that was built at the turn of the century, right? 
it's over well over 100 years old. But the parts aren't, right? The reason it's driving, it wasn't built to last 100 years, just like we weren't, frankly. Um, but it's been maintained properly and uh, parts have been exchanged. We can do that now at the cellular level. So that's what I'm talking about as far as health maintenance. So we're... We're, yeah, a disease, yeah. we're a disease treatment society. It's ridiculous. We wait till our body breaks down and then we try to get it back to homeostasis. It's, yep. it's silly, really, when you think about it. So th this isn't something that, uh, just give me a quick answer on this because it's not a yeah. real question, but people are listening going, like the, you know, the people that are like, you know, care about like global warming and stuff, which I mean, yeah. I, you should care about, but they're thinking yeah. we don't need more humans. Like there's a reason yeah. China only lets you have one child. Yeah. Like we can't, the, we can't sustain it. So, so yeah. you're helping the population grow exponentially. Do you have a quick rebuttal to that or? I mean, there's a couple of things. Um, so a lot of people say, Hey, I don't want to live forever. Like personally, they're like, why would I want to live forever? And I always, my response to that is always like the off button is very simple, right? Like we know how to turn the game. My off. response is they have yeah. a boring life. I would love to live forever. I would agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and then people that say, Hey, what about the population? Um, not to be crass, but I mean, this is a very tough problem we're solving. I, I think that there are more than enough talented people that can help with that problem. But the other thing is, is that what happens is we get incredibly capable as human beings and then the ride's over, right? So um, I think that there's probably uh, a tremendous amount of uh, upside to having these amazing minds stick around longer um, to solve these problems. Um, and also, you know, populations actually aren't increasing in a lot of areas of the world right now, too. So that's but this is a, a, not a topic of my expertise. Um, you know, we're trying to solve, a, I think, the greatest problem that's ever existed for our species. Uh, let us tackle that one. And um, there'll be more than enough capable people. Tackling Look, I, I think this is a bit of breaking news for everybody listening, but a major network has decided to pick up a version of this podcast in a reality show format. And this would be amazing TV, Nathan storing his stem cells. So we're going to figure out a way to build this into the show somehow, Stephen. we're gonna have a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's wrap up here with the famous five quick answers. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, my favorite business book is actually a selling book um, called The Challenger Sale. Are you familiar with it? I am. Good one. Red cover. Number two, yeah. is there a, a CEO you're following or studying right now? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, there is, and it's going to be a very obscure uh, thing. It's Jake Weatherly of um, Sheer ID, and it's just because he's a really good friend, and he's become an advisor over the years. Number. Uh, by the way, how much capital have you raised? Uh, we've raised about $2 million. Okay, good. So fairly, you're still on the bootstrap side of things. You're not crazy yeah. amount, amounts yet. Uh, number yeah. three, or number four, what's your favorite online tool? My favorite online tool? Yep. Gosh. Um, CoinCap right now. Coin, are, you, <laughs> are you still have exposure to crypto? Yeah, quite a yeah. bit. Yeah, that's good. All right, number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? About six. Okay. I mean, you don't need to sleep at all if you can just replace your stem cells uh, from like fatigue, right? In fact, I just ordered the Aura ring. Uh, so <laughs> To help funny. with that, because right. I really, the problem I need to solve. Number, uh, number. Uh, next question: uh, How old are you? I'm I'm 40, but my stem cells are 38. That's, oh yeah, you mentioned that. And are you married, single? You have kids? I'm uh, married. Uh, my wife's a dermatologist. She's amazing. Her name's Joanna, and I have three children: Eve, Atticus, and Mila. Wow. Okay. So, like, really, like, kind of depressing question here, though. For a second, if you <laughs> if you died, but your stem cells were stored, could she have yeah. a child that was like you, using your stem cells somehow? I mean, not, not with any technology that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, and, and also I, I should mention like you need your own stem cells you can't be using other people's cells. Like this is why we exist. Uh, yeah. so a lot of people are like, why can't I just use my kids? Uh, your immune system will wipe them out. You really yeah. need your own. All right. Last question. Take us back 20 years. What do you, or, or, or 18, depending on what date we're going by, but take us back to your 20 year old self. What do you wish he knew? Oh gosh. I wish he knew how capable he was. <laughs> how, yep. There you guys have it from Steven. He wishes he knew how capable he was. Cool space with the SaaS product. Fount basically selling fountain of youth. I'd call him a sleazy sales guy, but listen, he used a lot of big words and I believe the tech and he's in YC. So it must be good stuff. But there you have it. Again, launched recently. Over 200 customers have paid either two grand up front or seven grand lifetime for this. And they are doing about 45 grand a month already in recurring revenue from people paying basically storage fees for their stem cells where they can access at nine different points in the future. Stephen, I believe I got that right. They raised 2 million right. bucks growing yeah. quickly. Thank you, Stephen, for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan.